Greetings AVS pros, today we're delving into a topic we previously covered in a how-to video, Layer 2 Extension. Given its popularity among AVS users, our previous coverage feels like scratching the surface. Layer 2 Extension stands out as the most sought after features within AVS, primarily for its role in minimizing network changes during migration to Azure, particularly in preserving IP addresses. Given its complexity, we'll split the discussion into a two-part series. Today, we tackle the fundamental concepts, distinguishing what it entails, its requirements, and how it fits into your migration lifecycle. Let's begin with the essence of network extension. Enabling this feature within HCX allows you to select a virtual distributed switch port group to extend into AVS. The process on the back end is relatively straightforward. HCX generates API calls to establish a standalone segment within AVS's NSXT infrastructure, deploying a network extension appliance into that network. With the NE's uplink interface configured through network profile settings, traffic flows through the uplink network to reach the source side or on-premise network gateway, effectively stretching your on-prem network. This extension occurs seamlessly without necessitating changes to your existing network configuration by default minimizing the burden on the network team. When a VM is migrated to AVS via Layer 2 extension, it gains connectivity through the on-prem gateway. From a networking perspective, it's as if the VM never left. One might naturally wonder about potential traffic, hairpinning, or tromboning when accessing Azure resources. This concern is valid, but HCX has an answer to this and will address this latency issue with Mobility Optimized Networking in Part 2 of this series. Now let's delve into the tactical components of network extension to ensure thorough planning. Network extension is a feature nested within your HCX service mesh, accessible via the interconnect screen. Activating this feature deploys network extension appliances into your environment. AVS supports up to 10 network extension appliances per service mesh. Practically, this translates to supporting 80 networks extended into AVS with high availability, as each appliance can support eight extensions. However, factoring in HA where each any appliance pairs up for failover, this number reduces to 40. A key prerequisite for utilizing network extension is the use of virtual distributed switches in your on-prem environment. Without a VDS, HCX can facilitate migration, but network extension functionality is unavailable. While network extension boasts additional features like network HA and application path resiliency, it's generally regarded as a temporary solution for VM migration. To illustrate, envision your on-prem environment on the left and Azure infrastructure including AVS on the right. First, we need to establish our service mesh via HCX. We covered this in detail in another video on the channel, so make sure to check that out. Then we proceed to extend our networks. When VMs are migrated to AVS, their connectivity persists as HCX routes traffic back through the extension to the on-prem gateway. Eventually, the goal is to transition the entire network to AVS, leading us to a crucial requirement. Everything in that network must migrate. Once the gateway is cut over, the on-prem network is decommissioned. Thinking through a gateway cutover is a crucial point when you are planning network extension. If other devices or VMs reside on that network, they must either be re-IP'd or migrated alongside workloads. The network cannot exist in two places once unstretched. It's important to also note during planning, HCX prohibits extending certain networks, such as those with VM kernel interfaces or the uplink network housing the network extensions. However, it's imperative to verify if subnets earmarked for migration can be fully evacuated. What follows the migration of workloads and the need to transition the network is a gateway cutover scenario. This involves accessing the network extension screen and selecting the network slated for an extension. Here, there's essentially one crucial option to consider. As the warning on the screen underscores, meticulous planning with the network team is vital. Checking the Connect Cloud Network to Cloud Edge Gateway after unextending option prompts HCX to sever the L2 VPN stretch and connect the NSXT segment in AVS, creating its BGP advertisements from Azure. Simultaneously, it's required to remove the network on-prem to avert routing conflicts. Ensuring routes are accessible to all essential services for your VMs to operate smoothly will make for a great day of successful migration. Opting not to check this box results in HCX simply tearing down the network extension, a scenario reserved for instances where VMs have migrated back to on-prem and the extension is no longer required. In conclusion, Layer 2 extension with an AVS emerges as a pivotal tool in streamlining migrations to Azure while preserving existing network configurations. 
By understanding its fundamental concepts, tactical considerations, and gateway cutover scenarios, you're better equipped to navigate the complexities of using network extension. As we continue this series, we'll explore mobility optimized networking and delve deeper into optimizing network architecture for lower latency to cloud resources. Thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to unraveling more insights in the next installment. Remember, your journey to the cloud is not just about migration, it's about ensuring a smooth transition that aligns with your organization's goals and requirements. Don't forget to leave a comment and subscribe, and be sure to share with your peers going through this journey as well. Until next time, have a great day.